Hello everyone, you're listening to Manner of Death, and this week's Manner of Death is Undetermined. Brandon Swanson Brandon Swanson was born on January 30th, 1989, in Marshall, Minnesota, to Brian and Annette Swanson. He was 19 years old when he went missing in Marshall, Minnesota, on May 14th, 2008. At the time, Brandon was a freshman enrolled at Minnesota West Community and Technical College. On May 13, 2008, the college year had ended. Brandon went to several parties that day to celebrate. The first party was held in Lind, Minnesota, only seven miles from Marshall. Brandon would leave that party to attend another one in Canby, which is 40 minutes away from Lind. Brandon was driving while under the influence as several witnesses had seen him drink at both parties, but they also said he did not appear to be intoxicated. He left the party at roughly midnight. Brandon had lived in this area his whole life, so he should have had no trouble making it back home, but he had an accident. He had crashed his Chevy Lumina in a ditch. He wasn't hurt, but he couldn't get his vehicle unstuck. At 1.45 a.m., Brandon called his parents to come get him. According to the directions his parents received, he was halfway between Lind and Marshall, which would have taken only 30 minutes for the Swansons to drive. But when they got to the area, he described they couldn't find him. They honked and flashed their lights, but Brandon couldn't see them either. From there, they knew Brandon gave them the wrong directions. Brandon, upset because he thought his directions were sound, told his parents that he would leave his car and start walking towards some lights he saw in the distance that he thought was Lind. Brandon remained on the phone with his parents for 47 minutes, but around 2.30 a.m., Brandon would say the phrase, Oh shit, and that would be the last thing heard from him. His father called multiple times, but his calls went straight to voicemail. At 6.30 a.m., about four hours later, his parents called the police to report him missing after they had tried searching for him. Due to his age, the police didn't take it seriously because Brandon is an adult. However, a few hours later, they did file a case and begin a search. Based on phone records, police were able to find out that Brandon was not even in Lind when he went missing. His cell phone pinged near a town called Taunton which is 25 miles away from Lind. It was there they found his car in a ditch, like he had said. Helicopters and dogs were brought in to search. The dogs led a scent trail that went past some fields and to the Yellow Medicine River. The water was 15 feet deep at that point in time. Later that same year, Brandon's law was passed, which made it mandatory for police to begin immediately searching for missing adults under the age of 21 and older adults who disappear under suspicious circumstances. In 2010, Brandon's case was picked up by Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Investigation. A tip line was set up in 2015, but never led anywhere. Brandon is described as a white male with brown hair and blue eyes. He was five foot six and weighed 120 pounds. He would be 33 years old at the time of this video. If you have any information that could help find Brandon, please contact your local FBI office. Daniel Holling Daniel Holling was a 36-year-old man living in Virginia, Minnesota when he went missing. Daniel has been described as an easygoing guy who is sociable and non-confrontational. He liked to hang out at local bars in Virginia, Minnesota. He also worked seasonally at a resort in Babbitt, Minnesota as a handyman. The last time Daniel spoke to someone was on a phone call to his parents in January of 2003. The call revealed that Daniel was having money problems. On February 10, 2003, Daniel went to get his last unemployment check, although he didn't sign up to receive one for the next month. The last reported sighting of him is thought to be on February 14, 2003, on Chestnut Street in Virginia, Minnesota. In March of that same year, Daniel's start date for his job at the resort was coming up and his boss called him and even visited his home after he hadn't heard back from him. Calls to his phone 
had been left unanswered with a message saying that it had been disconnected. His boss even went into the home, but couldn't find anything missing or strange. It looked as if Daniel had, had not been there for a while. On March 23, 2003, his boss told Daniel's parents that he was having trouble contacting Daniel. When his parents also failed to reach him, they reported him missing in late March of 2003. Since then, Daniel has not been seen for 19 years. His parents, the Hollings, felt they lost a part of Daniel 13 years prior to his disappearance, when he had gotten into a car accident that killed his then-pregnant wife. He would serve jail time for the accident since he was speeding at the time of the accident. This led him down a path where he had attempted suicide. Perhaps this led to his disappearance, or perhaps it didn't have anything to do with it at all. I put this information in here in case it might be of use. Daniel is described as being a white male who is 6 foot 2 and weighed 175 pounds. He walks with a limp has dark circles and scars above both eyes, under his left eye, and under his chin. He also has surgical scars on the bridge of his nose, left foot, and right ring finger. He also had a piercing in one of his nipples. He could have potentially been wearing a gold ring with a quarter carat blue-green radiated diamond at the time he went missing. At the time of this video, he would have been 56 years old. His parents and other loved ones just want answers as to what happened to him. If you have any information that could help find Daniel, please contact the Virginia Police Department at 218-749-3572. Palmer Granger Palmer Granger was last seen on October 1, 1989 in Winona, Minnesota. Since then, no one has seen or heard from him. It's been 33 years since Palmer's disappearance. There is little evidence or leads into his case. He's described as an elderly white male. At the time he went missing, Palmer was 73 years old with gray hair and gray or blue eyes. He was five foot six and weighed 160 pounds. Today, at the time of posting this video, Palmer would be 106 years old. If you have any information that could help find Palmer, please contact the Winona Police Department at 507-457-6302. Joshua Guimond Joshua Guimond grew up in the small town of Maple Lake, Minnesota and was well liked by many. He was very persuasive and had even petitioned the town amend the teen curfew when he was only 16 years old. In November of 2002, Joshua was 20 years old and attending St. John's University in Collegeville, Minnesota, a private Catholic men's university. He was a pre-law major and quite involved on campus. That's why it was so out of character of him to go missing based on the following circumstances. On November 9, 2002, the night Joshua went missing, he had been hanging out with some friends. Roughly at midnight, Joshua left the dorm party he had been attending without telling anyone where he was heading. No one remembers him completely leaving, although an eyewitness claimed they saw him walking from Netted Court to his apartment in Maurer House, which passed some dormitories. Allegedly, he had also crossed an intersection to the left of Stump Lake and crossed near a bus stop near the exit of I-94. This was the last time anyone saw Joshua. Joshua had a mock trial practice the next day, and when he didn't show, his friends grew worried. The SJU safety officers were notified, but were not very concerned. They believed he had taken off with other friends. When Joshua didn't show up the following Monday for classes, his parents were notified that he couldn't be found. At this point, the Stearns County Sheriff got involved. Searches began with helicopters, on horseback, and by foot. The massive woods surrounding the campus was also searched. Weeks after his disappearance, the National Guard also helped in searching the woods near the campus. Volunteer searches were also utilized. Because of the close proximity to Stump Lake, diver, dive teams also searched watery areas nearby, but nothing was ever found. 
A dog that goes by the name of Hoover was especially useful as he had trailed Joshua Scent to Stumpf Lake and East Gemini Lakes. The dog also trailed a scent to the back of St. John's Abbey where the monastery was located. Unfortunately, campus staff would not allow the abbey to be searched and any further voluntary searches led by Joshua's family had to be approved by the school and the sheriff's office. Coincidentally, two other college boys went missing from nearby universities after leaving parties. Chris Jenkins was one of those students, and his father actually joined up with Brian Guimond, Joshua's father, to find their children. Hoover was hired to search for both boys and hit on Chris Jenkins' scent by the Abbey as well. Both fathers are convinced their sons were met with foul play. The Stearns County Sheriff's Department believed that Joshua most likely fell into the lake, even though divers never recovered any evidence of this. The path Joshua took was actually surrounded on one side by a road and on the other by the woods. A theory is that perhaps someone abducted him by one of the methods, as recently another student had been coerced into a car and was a victim of attempted sexual assault. A second similar event happened, but in a different town nearby. In late February, early March, two bodies were found of the other students that had gone missing. One of them was Chris Jenkins. They were floating in Midwest waterways. A third missing person was found as well and was determined to be a victim of homicide. Throughout 2003, searches were underwent, but nothing was found of Joshua. The Guimond family got a letter from St. John's University stating that the sheriff's department claimed the campus had been satisfactorily searched and that no others were planned for the future. There are many rumors surrounding this case, and I caution you to keep that in mind as they are just that, rumors. One of those rumors claims that a search of Joshua's computer found over 300 files deleted on the day he went missing. These files were claimed to have information about creating fake ID cards. The rumor is that Joshua had something to do with a fake ID ring. Another theory is that the monks of St. John's Abbey were involved in his disappearance. Attached to this theory were others that perhaps Joshua was writing a paper about sex abuse scandals in the Catholic Church focused on the SJU monastic community. A truth is within that rumor, as 18 members of that community had been credibly accused of sexual abuse. Joshua could have been researching this topic and met with foul play. The other theory linked to the monks of the abbey is that they were abusing alcohol and would drive drunk. This theory is that maybe they hit Joshua and he died in an accident, although there was no signs of a hit and run that the police could find. However, one theory highly disputed is that Joshua left of his own free will. He would have left without his glasses, without any money, and leaving his car behind. His friends are also not considered suspects since they were at the party and none of them were out of each other's sight at the time of disappearance. Suicide was also seen as unlikely as he had no indication of previous mental health conditions. The main theory by the sheriff's department is that he had drowned because he was drunk. This is highly disbelieved by his friends and family. Since Joshua went missing, the family continues on the search. They continue to bring awareness to his case by peacefully protesting. Although SJU filed a restraining order against Brian Guimond, Joshua's father, he later sued the sheriff's department in 2021 because of the quality of the investigation. What is tragic is that the judge denied his suit after the Stearns County Sheriff's Department argued the case would jeopardize the investigation. They might, there might be some light at the end of the tunnel, as in 2022, Joshua's case was featured on the podcast Simply Vanished, and civil rights lawyer Josh Newville vowed to help solve the case. An episode was set to air on a season of Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix with an episode dedicated to this case called What Happened to Josh? It has been 20 years since he has gone missing, but he still has family fighting to find out what happened to him. Joshua was born on June 18, 1982. He was 20 years old at the time he went missing and would be 40 years old at the time of posting this video. He is described as a white male who was 5 foot 10 and weighed 170 pounds. He had blonde hair. If you have any information that could help solve Joshua's case,
please contact the Stearns County Sheriff's Office at 320-251-4240. Joan Mary Biether Joan Mary Biether was born on January 7, 1947. She was 22 years old when on July 15, 1968, she got into an argument with her father. The next day, her brother reports that she told him she was going to leave and never come back. She left their home that was located at St. Paul, Minnesota, and has never been seen again. Fifty-four years have passed since that day, and she has never returned. Her case is seen as a cold case because of the lack of evidence as to her whereabouts. Joan is described as a Caucasian woman with brown hair and was five foot six and 120 pounds at the time she went missing. Today, at the time of posting this video, Joan would be 77 years old. She was also known to go by the nickname Joanne. If you have any information that could help find Joan, please contact the St. Paul Police Department at 651-291-1111. Martin Franzel. Martin Franzel was born on November 12, 1886, and was 76 years old at the time of his disappearance. Martin was last seen on the morning of June 14, 1964, when he left his home in Minneapolis, Minnesota, for his morning walk that he took every day. He was spotted on his walk by a family member near 66th Street and Nicolette Avenue. He has not been seen since. When he didn't make it back home, a search was underwent, but nothing was ever found. It has been 58 years since Martin went missing. His case is now considered cold. When he went missing, Martin was 76 years old and described as a white male with gray hair and blue eyes. He was five foot nine and weighed 145 pounds. He wore glasses with metal rims and walked with a noticeable limp and a stoop, which meant he needed to use a cane. The clothing he was last seen wearing on the day of his walk was a cotton shirt, khaki pants, and a tan colored cloth cap. Unfortunately, little else is known about Martin's case. If you have any information that might help find him, please contact the Minneapolis Police Department at 612-673-3000. Hey everyone, this is Manor of Duff. I just wanted to say thank you for all the support I've received lately and for all the recommendations I've been given. I used a couple of them recently. As you can see, this video from Minnesota was recommended to me. Someone recommended a case from here, so I did it. Um, I'll be doing a video on Harrison County Unidentified coming soon thanks to another subscriber who recommended it to me so I really appreciate all that you guys do for me and for the comments thank you so much I'll see you in the next one bye bye